What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Danso Pitch Podcast. This is your host, Rami Ibrahim of the Danso team, and this is episode 36. On this episode, we're going to go into some very useful information for some for parents, for hopeful parents, future parents, and whoever is just a forward thinker, you know, wanting to prepare for the future because nobody ever knows when their family is going to get started. So today we're going to go over some some key info to set yourself up from now. And I'm here with my two awesome hosts, as always. Go ahead and introduce yourself, fellas. Yeah, my name is Charles Danso. I am the founder and CEO of Danso Solutions and also one of the co-creators for the Danso Pitch podcast that you're currently tuning into. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank uh, Rami for taking time to moderate this and looking forward to giving the valuable information to the parents out there, guardians out there. Daniel, please introduce yourself as well. What's up, y'all? My name is Daniel Goodman. I'm the COO of Danso Solutions, also an integral part of the Danso Pitch, writer for The Investor, and it is my pleasure to be on this podcast episode with all of you today. Got some exciting stuff to get uh, started with, so um, Rami, please take it away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The team as always. So today, as we mentioned, we're going to go over some ways to start setting the framework for... um, just setting our kids and our future generations up for for tremendous success as much as we can do from now. So, Charles, why don't you tell us about one of the main ways, starting from now, people can start to do that, being custodial accounts. Yeah, so for the parents out there, custodial accounts are two ver- forms of uh, basically asset allocation for your children. Uh, There's two ways that you can do that. The first way is called a Uniform Gift Minors Act, as well as a Uniform Transfer Minors Act, which or the UGMA and UTMA. Uh, What those two basically um, deal with is for the UGMA, those are basically um, accounts that you start for your children that basically deal with the basic financial accounts like stocks, bonds, debt, etc. The UTMA, the Uniform Transfer Minors Act, deals with real estate properties on top of stocks, bonds, uh, mutual funds, et cetera, that you want to do for your children. Now, um, the thing with both accounts is uh, your child actually cannot access any of those funds that you provide from, let's say, the child's uh, inception birth to the child is at least 18. Uh, For the UTMA in some states, the age is actually 21. But the benefit of that is, again, you give your child a leg up um, from the start as opposed to waiting until the person is an adult. By the time that you start as uh, from their birth as a baby till they're 18 or 21, as I mentioned, uh, this child can basically have uh, thousands of dollars to their account. They can purchase their first home. They can allocate some of their funds to go to school with. Um, If they want to get a car, they don't have to actually finance it. They can buy it outright. So that's just a a way, a a great benefit for any parent out there uh, to kind of utilize. Now, there are um, things that basically deal with this, these two uh, types of accounts. Uh, For one is uh, these are technically considered gifts for your child. So that means that once you actually put the money in parents, it's irrevocable, meaning that you cannot take the money out for whatever reason. So I definitely uh, think for the parents out there, uh, it's something to look at and I think is a benefit because, again, it's like you putting money into an account where you can't touch it. It's a savings account for your child. So that's a benefit, again, uh, so you can continuously build on the account. So if you are going to put money in, make sure it's money that you know that you're not going to be like, oh, uh, like in a couple of weeks or months or years down the line, you're like, I got to take it out for whatever reason. That money is solely for your child. And, uh, and when that person becomes an adult, he or she will basically utilize that um, those uh, funds, so to speak. Now, um, there are uh, huge capital gains on it. So I think the best strategy for the parents out there is to basically do a buy and hold strategy, which basically means that if you are going to actually put that money in, look to hold that money for about 10, 15, um, even 18 years. So definitely a benefit to start, start a custodial uh, fund when your child is at least from the age of one to like five, and then you build from there. Because again, the more you put money in, the longer that you hold it, um, you know, the, the the benefits of it growing. Now, um, 
there are there is a 529 account and obviously daniel i'm going to let you touch more on that that you can also utilize um for solely for your uh child's uh funding for school now daniel if you could please provide some uh intake on that yeah um as charles mentioned uh a 529 account is another investment vehicle that you can provide your children um it, it the main focus and the main benefit from it is that it's directed towards educational expenses so most notably a 529 plan is used for college savings um, but you could also use it for uh, secondary school expenses um, pri uh, um, primary school expenses you know from kindergarten to uh, high school you can also have a 529 in place for those expenses as well but usually it's used for um, college expenses. College is crazy expensive these days. Um, and it's, it's, just, it's just crazy how expensive it is. And there's uh, two main uh, 529 accounts that you could create. There's the uh, college savings plan, which is the most popular, um, which pretty much works like a Roth IRA account. So you can put after tax dollars into the account and just let it grow. You invest in a variety of things, mutual funds, stocks, you know, whatever. Um, when, when you make the account, you'll have all of the investment options laid before you and you can make your choices there. And these are these are going to grow. You know, these are investments that um, first off there, you know, the, the, the contributions you make are they're unfortunately not going to be um, they're non deductible from your um, federal income taxes, but there are tax advantages to having a 529 plan in place um, when you when you uh, make a college savings plan account. The second account um, is a prepaid tuition pl uh, plan account, which, you know, you, you fund the account. Um, same concept, uh, but it allows you to prepay. Uh, part or all of a public, a state public college tuition. So you could prepay before you go to college. However, the, um, you know, you have to work it out obviously with the college because every college is different. Um, but there's also that plan that you can implement. Now, a 529 plan isn't subjugated to the state that you live in. You could live in Virginia and make a 529 account that is in california and go to school in florida like there, there's different ways where you can move around and it's benefits to that because um there's every state has its own uh state tax laws when it comes to 529 plans but generally you can create a 529 plan anywhere um, within the united states and you are able to uh, use that for um, virtually any college, most colleges do accept the 529 plan as, you know, for whatever expenses that you need now. And that's, and that's very important because, you know, the difference, the key difference there between the 529 plan and the custodial accounts is that the 529 plan, you use it for only educational expenses. You know, you can't just withdraw it and then you know go buy yourself a car like that's that's not an educational expense you could probably try and write it off to the irs like that but they're not probably going to see it that way so you have to you know it, it's used primarily for tuition books supplies laptops that's an that's an equipment um you could use it for your your children's rent room and board things like that but you want to avoid uh using that money for um, things that are not related to uh, educational expenses because there are tax penalties for that. Um, you can be subjugated to a 10% uh, penalty if you use the funds for something outside of uh, tuition and, and uh, college expenses. And also, uh, it'll be treated as ordinary income tax. So th those are the like downsides to it. But the upside is for a 529 plan is that you can withdraw up to $10,000 tax-free federally. So that's a lot of change that you could use for, you know, earnings. And this is $10,000 in earnings. So $10,000 in earnings for the, in the account will be uh, tax-free federally. State, it depends on the state laws, but federally you will 
you won't have to pay taxes on ten thousand dollars of earnings and then um you know that money can just save you potentially thousands of dollars in the long term if you think about it if you make this account for your child um when they're like one two three years old 16 17 18 years of capital gains growth and whatever investment you choose you're saving a lot of money when it comes time for like college expenses or even as i said before you can use this for secondary school education you can use this for you know high school it doesn't have to be specifically college but it can be used as a great savings tool a great investment vehicle for your children in conjunction with custodial plans great Thank you for shedding all that light on both types of plans. And really what I hear both of you highlighting is just how important it is to plan and allocate funds accordingly. Um, the 529 plan is going to be money strictly used for, for the child's education. Meanwhile, the custodial accounts are strictly to be used for the minor or for the child they can't be used for your own personal expenses. So you really have to plan where your money's gonna be going. Much like investing in anything, you have to be able to use income that you're not gonna see, like that you can't, you gotta be able to be using discretionary income and not money that's gonna be, you know, taking food out of your plates. You gotta allocate properly. Is that right, guys? That's correct, yeah. That's, absolutely, absolutely. I, you know, and that's a very important thing you brought up, Rami. I think that, you know, it's also important to, to know that these plans in place, custodial 529, like these are investments, you know, for your, your children. These are like how you set accounts up for your to put your children in a better future financial position, but also not at the cost of your own financial position. Um, and it, I think it's also like important for them to, to realize that this is happening, you know. Like they know that they have these accounts. It's not just, you know, you bring it to them when they're like, you know, 13, 14, like, hey, this is what I've been doing for you. I think it's great to start as early as possible. You know, maybe even as as early as like eight or nine, you know, have them just, you know, slowly bring them in, you know, with like the rope of just like introducing what stocks are, what investments are. You know, how do the banks work and, in, you know, a very easy to digest formula so that that way you know, when it comes time for them to to make these big decisions, because these are their accounts. The custodial account is going to be their account when they reach of age. The 529 plan account is going to be, you know, for their educational expenses. And, and you know, it, it'll be a big factor for them, um, whether they have to, like, take out right. loans or not. And so, you know, financial education, savings, all of those great things that um, we're touching on. And that Rami brought up is, yeah, you know, allocate the right amount of funds to, um, you know, invest in the future. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I think like like Rami and, and yourself, Daniel, touching upon was more so, like you said, just having um, the right strategy as a as a parent for your child. Because, again, the, the thing that we always preach, I think a lot more people are privy to now is financial literacy. And that also deals with generational wealth in that regard. So I think having something where you don't have to struggle much like our parents did now that obviously our peers are becoming parents. So I think a lot of the followers listening, obviously you have siblings, you have yourself, maybe that's a parent. You may know somebody that's a parent that has a young child coming into his own or him, him or her coming into their own, so to speak. So I think having an account like this uh, depending on how you want to balance that for your child. Uh, me personally, I prefer uh, 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 those two UGMA and UTMA accounts. Uh, if I also have a child, obviously, because I feel like that kind of gives more of a wiggle room. Um, I think the 529 is more so parental. Um, I think it's a benefit for a 529 as well because of the fact, obviously, uh, if you are looking to obviously um, take out some type of federal loan, for your child, um, you probably wouldn't face as high as a penalty as you probably will for a custodial account. The reason being is because obviously uh, the government will probably consider uh, you having real estate in your child's name or having stocks and bonds in your child's names as more of an asset, which they feel like obviously you wouldn't really need the money as opposed to someone that may, may save up a 529 just for uh, their educational purposes. But again, I think um, 
with the custodial accounts, you can do so much more. Your child, uh, when they become an adult, can do so much more. Um, I know personally I've struggled with just trying to get a car, uh, trying to get my own place. So I think having that money, having 20000 30000 saved, where you can get a down payment on an actual home, where you don't have to rent, where you don't have to lease, where you don't have to finance, you can buy that right. That's that's beautiful. You you know you don't you don't put added debt for your child. So I think that's just important to know. Another thing I would note too is, as a custodial accounts, those two, um, you actually don't have to be just a parent. You could actually be a a, a, a guardian. You can be a, a family member like an aunt, uncle, and you could actually open a custodial account for your niece, nephew. Uh, maybe an older brother or older brother could open for a younger brother, whatever the case is. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. People think a custodial account is strictly just parents. The reason why, obviously, they say parents is because you need their personal information. But um, there are people that I know that have open custodial accounts that aren't even actually parents. They're just a close family member that may lo be looking out for their aunt or sorry, their nephew and niece as an aunt or uncle. So I think that's just important to know. So if you do have uh, a young child that's a family member as well and you want to and you're interested in opening a custodial account talk to your brokers talk to your brokerages talk to to uh these different brokers out there that are able to assist you with opening a custodial account it's it's pretty simple and you're just going to uh, benefit that young child's life in the future so i definitely recommend taking advantage of that right and how many things can you say that you can buy that are gonna, you know, appreciate and val like actually gain value in years and a decade to come? Financial assets give you that chance versus, you know, you buy, you give somebody a car every day you own a car, it's depreciating in value and other material items like that. But when you invest in a, in an account, a custodial account, you're giving your money, you're giving money set aside for your child or minor that you're a guardian of the chance to have more money than you started with for them it gives it a chance to grow and we always say you want the money to be working for you so that's a rare chance to you know invest in appreciating assets um so that's the custodial accounts and also the 529 plan gets you know you really want to know you have a say in your child's education until they're a certain age right but you don't want to be stuck with a uh, 529 account and then your child just doesn't want to go to school. So you definitely want to <laughs> yeah. want to know the risks, know the costs uh, associated. And, you know, um, as Daniel mentioned, there's tax. There's going to be costs if you try to take this money out later. If you if you get cold feet or if, if your child doesn't want to go to college, you know. Make sure you're using the money in those accounts. If it's a 529, you're using it for their education when the time comes. Um, and also, you know, as I said, plan accordingly because you're not going to be able to touch this money. Otherwise, you're going to pay the price and pay massive fees on all the withdrawals that you make. So, you know, invest wisely. <laughs> and, and one thing I want to add to that, um, which is a, is a nice note, is that you could – make a custodial account and then you could transfer uh that into a 529 account you don't but you can't do the same you can't do the reverse so if you're not you don't have to necessarily create the account you know right off the bat if you're unsure of your college if you're if you're unsure that your child wants to go to college that conversation can happen later in the game um and you could uh, do transfers of assets into a 529 account later on so that you, you know, don't run the risk of uh, over investing into a 529. And then you just you just have money sitting there that's not being used because, you know, you tried to decide to go to college or, you know, it's not being used intended for um, educational uh, expenses. So that's also one thing to consider as well. You yeah. don't have to bulk invest. You can also do it in sparingly and do it in parts. Yeah, I mean that's and that's just my thing. Why I'm not I'm kind of against 529. Me personally, um, obviously for the audience listening mm -hmm. in, um, that's up to you and your child or whoever uh, family member that you're doing this for. But the thing is, with a 529, obviously, as a parent, um, we obviously uh, I don't have children, but obviously I know I have friends that are, that have kids. So I know that obviously that is a big decision as a parent to say, like, you want to further your child's education. But obviously 
as we've all grown up and we've all seen, not everybody actually takes advantage um, of going to college because, you know, they're, everybody's different. Everybody has different skill sets. College isn't necessarily reflective of how smart you are or how talented you are with in terms of uh, from your hands and your mindset. I think that there's various ways to do it. So, again, um, I personally am, I don't really look at 529 as, as just a sole thing because, again, as a custodial, in a custodial account, like if you do have, let's say, 30,000 or 50,000 in, in, in real estate property that your child is managing right now, when that child is 18 or 21, uh, or also if they have uh, stocks that's worth like 40 grand or 50 grand. I mean, they pretty much have, even if you don't have money necessary going into a college fund, you have money to acquiesce to, to, to pay your bills. Like example, if you've been buying T-Mobile stock for your child since your child was five years old and your child turned 18, I'm pretty sure that stock, the money that you're getting, the dividend, you could probably pay that phone bill monthly where you don't have, you as a parent don't have to pay your child's uh, bill. Or if you bought Apple stock, that person could get a, I could get an iPhone 30 probably by the time that <laughs> that child is obviously old enough to basically uh, buy her, the him or her phone for themselves as an adult. So again, there's different ways to utilize custodial accounts. A 529, again, like I said, I, Charles, personally am against it, but I feel like it's also a benefit because even if you do have the money in there um, and the person doesn't go to the traditional four-year college, you can still use it for a trade school where the person can use that money. It's just it's solely used for educational uh, you know, purposes. And obviously, we live in a world now where education is so... Uh, global it's so uh, diverse where you it's not accessible. just accessible yeah it's not it's accessible like you said exactly you can even now I'm pretty sure we will be transitioning where our children will probably be doing a lot of school uh, from home even after the pandemic years after because of the fact that I feel like the world has seen that we're able to do our work our our our, our jobs from home so I think that's also a benefit as well as a parent so even if you're thinking that, hey, maybe my child won't go to a traditional four-year school, but you still, if you're still interested in a 529, take the chance. You never know because, again, like Rami had just mentioned, uh, education is so diverse now, and you can just utilize that 529 plan outside of just uh, the traditional four-year school uh, for those, obviously, that may have children that may not want to go that traditional route. But again... Um, I think us having the benefit to share this, uh, Daniel, I think you would agree as well, is, is, is more so for the parents um, just to kind of come back, uh, discuss with their significant other, uh, whoever that may be again, and, and ultimately plan out for your child's future. So I think that's important to note. Um, and yeah, uh, you guys thoughts on that. Yeah, I want to say that it's it's also really key. I, I I think Daniel mentioned this earlier is just to like bring your children or your or the youth around you into the world of finances and taking care of themselves financially from young. Like there's there's no reason to say you know somebody's too young to learn this or hear about what's going on in the world because if you start from young. By the time you hit, by the time they hit their teens or young adulthood, they're already far advanced compared to others that were not taught anything. Because you know, not everybody gets the chance to know this or have had an adult that did this for them or have listened to the Danzo pitch who told them to do so. So you know, definitely take the time to bring the youth, give them value from young, and then this will all be very interesting to them. Like, I, I would be excited to know I had a fund, you know, especially for me when I turned 18 plus, that might make me wanna, you know, learn more about all the things that are going on behind the scenes. And also there's ways I personally, a fun thing that I can suggest that could add value to your child is teach them teach them a skill or a hobby that that could appreciate as well. For example, like collections of things, like collecting something that will gain value. like. For example, baseball cards used to be a thing. Somebody who did that back in the day with their father, 40 years later, is now selling them for hundreds of thousands or millions. Collect anything. Collect anything that might be of value in the future. If you teach your kids little fun skills like that, not only will you get closer to them, but 
they could have a nice payday off in the future. So that's just a tip that came to me as I as we recorded. Yeah, and going off that, you know, um, I think another great thing to to teach and, and instill this idea of savings and saving for the future is that, you know, they, they know that this account exists and this account is for the future. So I think it's a good practice to uh, when they have money, when they receive like, you know, whatever it is, allowance or Christmas money or whatever, you know, have them make the decision. Hey, do you want to put this in your account for the future? Do you want to put this in this savings account that we've made for you that's current or do you want to spend it? Do you want, you know, but you have to put away something. Where do you want to put this money? And I think that will instill the habit of saving for the future, because obviously when we become adults, we start thinking about, OK, we need to, like, make some retirement accounts. We need to do this. We need to do that. So I think that's a fun thing also to just have in there, you know, five bucks out of one hundred dollars. They're not going to miss it, you know, but that five dollars can go a long way. So I think that's another thing that we can that's that will add value to um, the financial education of uh, the children. Yeah. And um, yeah, just to kind of add on to what these guys are saying for the audience out there that's listening right now, watching, um, I think an important thing is, of course, I think mentioning these accounts, the most benefit is you, a parent can't touch it. Neither can a child. I think the best way to save money is when it's out of reach. Because the thing is, you're not tempted <laughs> to touch it because you know you can't uh, physically. So it allows you to basically build a portfolio for your child and also teach yourself. Because I think the most the benefit of that is as a parent is if you are building a fund for your child where you have money continuously going through, it makes you reflect yourself and see what you're doing and what you can improve on um, being a parent for your child as well, where you can allocate more money into this fund for your child. Uh, I think the, the benefit is of, of the world that we live in is we look, we have to look at the next generation. As soon as we come into our own, where we're working for ourselves, we see our friends start to marry, we eventually get married, have children. Uh, I think it's important. We have to start as soon as um, maybe your significant other, whoever it may be, say like, hey, I'm pregnant. Well, you got to turn that switch on and say, <laughs> time to call my my financial manager. <laughs> exactly. And, 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 you know, Book on speed dial. It's, it's, the, it's the mindset we definitely got to have, because the thing is, like, again, it's, it's better to start as soon as that child is born and then build where, again, you see a lot of folks um, where a lot of wealthy individuals, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard the Jay-Z's rap about this, this and that, where he says he's giving art to his daughter. Where you see people, even even a, a, a Warren Buffett saying he taught his kids about investing. They wanted to learn more because as parents, as guardians, children emulate what they see, what they're taught. So I think if you're teaching your child the financial literacy, how to better uh, educate themselves in the financial world. And there's no excuse now. It's not like back in the days where maybe you have to pick up a certain book. You can, you can go on, on YouTube and watch the dance or pictures Rami said. You can watch so many other business platforms where they're teaching you this on the weekly, on the daily. So there's no excuse as parents or guardians not to, not to basically equip your child where they have a leg up, especially, I think, being minorities because of the fact of the society, unfortunately, didn't give us a, a spoon in our mouth, quote, quote, unquote. So I think having that ability to educate ourselves and then teach the next generation only is just going to benefit the future of individuals that look like us talk like us act like us and i think that's the most important thing that's why we're giving this information for you guys because it's not necessarily for our benefit but it's more so for the listeners for you guys listening in right now watching trying to better educate yourself because again even if you're young and you're like hey I'm enjoying life right now. At some point, you get old. Even if you don't have children, you will know somebody that has children. And you want to even e educate them to say, like, hey, this is what you can do, you know, for this child or whatever the case is. Because even you're giving that information and sharing that information is only going to benefit the society as a whole. Your thoughts, gentlemen, on that? I think that's a great point, Charles, that you can even if you don't have the kids or you're not the person we're directly speaking to if you picked up any info from an episode like this you can impart wisdom onto the people around you you know it's never 
you just never know what people know and they don't know so why not share what you do know and help others be great because at the end of the day you know we want our kids to be set up for success so that their life can be better and they can impact the world you know it's not just for selfish reasons it's not just so they can have money it's so that they could do something great with it in return and have a foundation have a building block that some of us may not have had you know um this is money that taken little by little from the pocket of a parent when given to the child is going to be like a jackpot you know it's it's a rare opportunity and what better way to give back than to set the future up you know that's my take on yep. this whole episode. And, and yeah, like as Charles mentioned like earlier in the episode, um, a custodial doesn't have to be a parent. And that's the same concept here when it comes to, you know, g- giving these um, nuggets of gold, as I would say, to uh, a young child. Um, you know, this money could be uh, given to them and invested for them on behalf of like an aunt, and uncle, um, you don't necessarily, if you don't have children, um, imparting that financial uh, wisdom and and that financial uh, excellence onto someone you know, a family member you know, for the future is in its own going to benefit society and like and your environment and your own community. So, and overall, it's about increasing the black wealth. Um, increasing wealth as a whole so anything that you learn anything that you gain from watching these videos you know share it um share this episode please you know let people know that these type of accounts exist let family members know that these type of accounts exist um and that you know these are the steps that can be taken now even if you're not at the at the level of you know imparting uh you know or you don't have the financial position to you know invest or create for a child or if you don't have a child or you know even if it's a younger brother or sister you know there are different ways that this type of information and this uh financial um these financial items can be imparted so you know utilize them yeah definitely um i I just want to share final thoughts again on this episode for the audience tuning in uh this will be exclusively on youtube on the danso solutions youtube channel subscribe check us out as well on instagram at the danso pitch we will have a twitter up feed as well for you guys coming soon we will be sharing this episode and future episodes we will be having our danso university classes coming soon so if you want to get a breakdown of how to actually uh get a custodial account how to actually look at real estate how to look at stocks. We're going to have guests. We're going to have so many things coming out for you guys. Again, this information is for you, everybody. <laughs> so definitely take advantage of it. You know, we we love, I love, I love giving this information out because this is something I, I literally study. I love reading about this stuff. I love like just wanting to learn more and give this information out. So I definitely think if you're an audience listening in right now, I would definitely share this with anybody around you this is valuable information we're giving out i wish i had this when i was a child because i really didn't pay attention enough so i think now being an adult and realizing that damn this is actually affecting my pockets this is may affect my future children's pockets i'm definitely trying to learn as much as possible so i'm prepared and i don't have to be like fuck when the time comes so i think that's important for you guys again uh, these gentlemen are, are one of the best in the game to give you guys this information as well. Rami, Daniel, I thank you guys so much again, like I said. Uh, and again, this is what, episode 36, right? Episode yes, 36. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, definitely, uh, by the time you guys hear this, it'll be uh, probably the weekend. So definitely take uh, take the weekend. It's supposed to be nice out. I think it'll be rainy, but it'll be nice. So definitely enjoy it on your run to, to the gym, on your exercise out. If you're drinking... Hey, listen to it. Share that information with your friends. <laughs> Why not? And yeah, uh, thank you guys. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and we will catch you next time on the Danso Pitch. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.